this is a long video, so I apologize in advance, but it has a lot of techniques and a lot of layers in it. And I, one of the reasons why it's so long is I struggled with, with exactly what to cut out and what to leave. Cause I don't like having things that are redundant, uh, you know, watching me fuse the surface of the encaustic paintings for like 10 minutes. It just seems unnecessary. So I try to cut down as much as I possibly can, but there's uh, especially this new technique that I'm trying this time uh, with image transfers. I really wanted to show you guys kind of all that was necessary. So I trimmed it down a little bit, but I tried to keep as much as I could that to give you a better idea of exactly how this technique works. So first I had to take this collage apart. This is a collage I did, oh goodness, probably 10 years ago. Uh, it was a commemoration of when I was a missionary. So I have some documents like letters and, and a map and a picture of myself and stuff like that kind of added to this collage. But looking back, looking on it, it just, it just looks unprofessional. It looks boring and just not very interesting. So I wanted to redo it and kind of make it a little bit more artistic. But that means I had to take the whole thing apart first and redo the whole wood board. So you can see I took all the pieces of, of paper off. And these, these pieces of paper are really, are really big for to really work well in a collage. You can see how easy they are to kind of take apart. Um, of course, once you decide to rip a piece apart, then it, it's not really that hard. But uh, it was a little too easy, especially for some of the thicker pieces um, that I really shouldn't have tried to add to this in the first place. But once I stripped everything down, I, I got all the wax off and I really need to get a bigger scraper because it just takes too long to scrape with this tiny little thing. <laughs> but uh, once I got everything down, I smoothed the surface as much as I possibly could, got as much wax off as I could. And now I'm starting with a white base. So I added three layers of white and I, I skip a lot of this part. So you can see I'm adding a, a layer of white to the surface, but I don't show all the rest of the layers because that just seems that's part of the redundancy that I was talking about before. So that's three layers of wax. And then I start with my image transfer. Now I took the same letter that I had put in this collage and I, I took as much of the wax off as I could and I photocopied it and flipped it. So when I printed this piece of paper out and you need to use the inkjet printer to do this technique, when I printed it out, uh, it, I printed it backwards so that when I added it to the surface, it would show correctly. This part with the spoon was the hardest part. Uh, I'm trying to show as much of this as I can, just just to show how long you have to do this. This was hard on my hands because I, I have a little arthritis in my fingers and it and it was rough. I had to take a few breaks and do it in steps. So it was three or four uh, different sessions of me rubbing the, the paper onto the wax as hard as I could. But it's better to do it too much than too little. And you want the surface to be very cool when you do this. Because if you if you do it on a warm wax surface, it's it's going to, you'll be pushing so hard, it's going to make the wax go everywhere. So you need to make sure that it's cool so that the wax stays in place so that you don't disrupt the surface. Once you've, once you've rubbed it enough onto the surface that it sticks, uh, you, you wet the paper and you just start rubbing and to get all that excess paper off. And this step takes a while too. I got all of the big chunks of paper off and then I had to do another, 
I had to go over it one more time to get all the little the rest of the of the paper off. I was a little nervous about this because I've never done this technique before on encaustic and I was so scared that I was just going to rub all the ink off and it's true it did get a little um, lighter because some of the some of the image came off as I was rubbing it but but it most of it stayed which was it's always nice when something works the way it's supposed to and even when I've done it for the first time so to kind of see a technique come together it's really satisfying and and it it kind of it builds my confidence because I'm like oh it's not going to stay it's not going to stay but but when it does and the technique works the way that you've seen it for other artists it's like yes I did it right And that's the final transfer. That's what it looked like. So you can see it's a little bit lighter uh, once I got all the paper off. But it's still there, still very much visible. And I wanted to layer, I wanted to add some color to this. And so I, I'm not a very good drawer, I, illustrator, I suppose I should say. But I wanted to add a little bit of Washington State. That's where I was a missionary wanted to add a little bit of the character of Washington to this piece, make it a little more interesting. So I'm, I'm adding some water to the layers and kind of with the intention of kind of building it up as I'm working on this piece. So I didn't have, I had a fairly clear vision of what I wanted this piece to look like, but it did evolve as I kept going because I could see what, what worked and what didn't and, and discovered some other things I wanted to add that that ended up really adding to the piece. So I don't know if it was strictly necessary for me to have layered the color like this. It was, it was fun to try and see how it came together. I'm using oil pastels to add the color here. I'm trying to do different shades of blue and purple to create some depth. being very careful as I add layers of wax over the oil pastel. Because if you, if you pull with the brush too hard, it, you can smear all the color. So I'm really trying to be very gentle as I add the wax so that I smear it as, as little as possible. This is my second letter image. I've also 
photocopy this and flipped it. Those big chunks of paper were didn't have any part of the image on it, so I, I didn't try to rub those parts down. I probably could have just cut them off before I added it to the piece, but it seemed unnecessary to do that at the time. My second letter is added. I'm, I'm uh, pretty pleased with how it's turning out. I, I was, it was a little touch and go there for a little while. After I added the first letter, I was like, oh, I'm not sure I, I really like this. But I, I kept going. I, I trusted the vision that I had. And uh, I think it's starting to come together a little bit better. And especially as I add the map of my mission to the surface. Originally, I was going to try to collage this map back into the piece, but the photocopy wasn't great. It was a little too damaged when I pulled it off of the old collage, and so I decided to just trace it. Trace it, because these large chunks of paper um, are are kind of hard to to really add well to a encaustic collage. So I'm using my awl, carving over where I just traced so that I can fill those, those grooves with oil paint. And it was definitely the right call to do this instead of try to add the piece of paper with the map on it to, to the surface. Because now I have just the, the outline of the map. I can still see the text of the letters through the surface and the color shining through as well. And once I wipe the oil paint away, I'm, I'm really, really happy with how it, uh, it turns out. It adds just the right touch. Gosh, it's always so satisfying wiping away the oil paint, seeing the image that is left behind.
especially in fast motion, because this can kind of take a while sometimes, and watching it sped up is definitely more satisfying. Now, when I carve lines into the surface of the wax like this, I get a lot of wax residue that kind of folds over onto the surface and and uh, creates these additional lines on the on the surface around where I've carved. And uh, normally it doesn't bother me when that happens, but for this one, I really wanted the lines to be crisp and thin, and so I. I'm taking the time to scrape the lines and remove all of that excess wax and excess oil paint that's kind of accumulated around those carved lines. And it's definitely worth doing if you want, if you really like that crispness, that those thin, those thin markings. Of course, it does smear the surface a little bit, so you need to wipe with the linseed oil again just to clean it off. And don't forget, when, when you wipe oil paint away with linseed oil, linseed oil doesn't uh, act like a lot of other oils. It, it oxidizes as it essentially as it evaporates. It doesn't really evaporate, it just oxidizes, but it gives off warmth when it does that. So when you have a bunch of paper towels that are covered in linseed oil, you don't want to like just smoosh them up and throw them in the trash because all that heat can kind of accumulate if there's a bunch of linseed oil soaked rags and paper towels kind of crumpled together. So make sure you lay them out flat and let them dry before you throw them away. Now this is uh, on the map of my mission. These are the cities that I served in are the ones that I'm marking right now and I'm filling them with red oil paint so they kind of stand out. I indented into the surface with little circles trying to get as close approximation of where they are uh, as I could. You know my map tracing was not exactly perfect but I got pretty close. I did get some oil pastel on my fingers and it transferred to the surface in a couple places so I had to I had to wipe it away a few times to keep the surface clean.
And of course, it wouldn't be a commemoration of Washington State if I didn't add a mountain. It's one of the things I miss most about Washington, our the amazing mountains, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, Mount Hood. I do a final fuse to kind of encapsulate all the leftover linseed oil and make the surface shiny again, as well as to encapsulate the oil pastels and to make the surface nice and solid. And the last step is I'm stamping the names of the areas, the cities where I served, onto the surface because they were on the original map that I had used in my previous collage. But because I didn't add that map to this collage itself, I wanted to, I still wanted to have the names of the cities and the areas, so I'm stamping them onto the surface. I don't think this piece is perfect, but I think it's a lot more interesting and fun to look at than the previous one and it's a lot better as far as encaustic techniques and I know it's going to last longer so I'm happy that I that I redid this even though it was a lot of work but it's it's fun to see kind of the difference between where I was as an artist you know 10 years ago when I just started doing encaustic and where I am now some of the techniques that I've learned and new ones that I'm acquiring and Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any questions or suggestions and I'll see you in the next video.